<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, let me just make sure everyone can hear me well. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, Saturday, September 12th. I am so happy. I have two great um, people of God, one Dr. Dat Warren Dillon, and then Mrs. Uh, Ms. Ty Johnson, I beg your pardon. Uh, I've known Ms. Ty Johnson for a very long time, and she's a great woman of God, a prophetic worshiper as well. And then she is introducing her spiritual dad onto us on this platform today, who has great wealth of information, knowledge, and wisdom to share on this platform. Uh, we are still talking about the subject of beautifying women, and we really want to know it from a man's perspective, <coughs> so that it's just not women on this platform and talking, but we want to hear it from the elderly, where wisdom prevails, where knowledge prevails, so that we can share. So I would say that starting with you questions uh, for Miss Ty, for myself, or the doctor, Dr. Dylan, and then we'll be able to answer your questions, God willing. And I'll also encourage you to share the video with your friends and family so that they can pour in their questions as we try our very best to answer those questions for you. And so I'm going to introduce Miss Ty. She was on the show last week. The subject or the theme is beautifying women. We understand that women were created uniquely. We were, women were created to help uh, men or women were created even in the world to help society. Uh, for some reason or the other, we have um, diminished our own value as women, not even saying someone else was responsible. And just to, just to emphasize, we are not here to destroy any man, but we are here to actually speak the truth and so that the truth will set someone free. And so women, beautifying women, is about taking the brokenness of a woman and the Lord restoring women through his word, taking the, the, the sadness or the, 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 the bad testimonies and changing them into good testimony, and women helping another woman um, at the same time. Um, sending women are not able to fulfill their dreams or their ministries or their destinies, and they're sending reasons and sending paths and sending decisions that we make that hit us from making, you know, get it into that place where God created us to be. There's a type of a woman that is remade or molded before she meets a partner or spouse. We're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk about abuse. We're going to talk about either physical abuse. We're going to talk about emotional abuse, financial abuse, what, whatever abuse you have experienced. We want to bring these red flags to your attention to let you know that it is not normal to accept them. What is normal is that when you see the flags, you address them, you fix them. You don't accept them as normal because you think you're not worth the best. And so I'm going to bring Dr. Miss um, Ty on right now to talk to us. But before then, please try and share the video with your friends and family as well. Miss Ty, please take over. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Abina, for having me here. I'm honored to be a part of this particular event that is being hosted by your ministry, a powerful prophetic ministry. And um, I'm doubly honored to introduce to the world my spiritual father. Um, he's been my father for over 22 years. That's the betterment of my life. And uh, my life is the better for it. He is a very um, great man of God, of high integrity and character. And he is the founder um, of In His Image Ministries, as well as In His Image Bible Institute International, In His Image Christian Academy, In His Image Learning Center, and Reach One Mission International, which is an NGO out of East Africa. Um, he has lent his life to the ministry, and I am just so honored and pleased uh, to be a part. I come out of his ministry. I'm a daughter um, of his, and it's been a privilege and an honor to serve under his lead and guidance. And I believe with all of my heart that today we will be blessed with a word from God that will encourage us forward in the mission and the ministry that God has. He has a powerful testimony and I hope he shares it with us about his, another very impactful person in my life is um, his late wife. Uh, uh, she really blessed me tremendously and mothered me in ministry. Um, and uh, 
uh, Velma Dillon, this is Velma Dillon, Pastor Velma Dillon, and um, I pray that he can share a testimony about that. And then um, also his current wife right now, uh, she's a tremendous blessing to my life as well, uh, Miss Leany. <laughs> and so I, I want uh, Pastor to really share with us today, and I want you guys on this platform to really come forward with your questions. This will bless you. He has a wealth of knowledge. Um, those We will also later link in the websites for you to go and check out the Bible Institute. If you're looking to get your degree in Bible, this is an awesome program for you to link up with and be a part of. And I encourage you to put your questions in because we're about to really go deep today. And before we get started, can we just go ahead, um, Avina? I know we prayed off screen, but we can pray on the screen. Thank you so much. And so, Father, we commit this session to your hands. Indeed, it's not by power, by might, but by your spirit. We are here yielding to your instructions and to your confidence, Holy Spirit. And you take over our minds, you take over our hearts, you take over our bodies. And we pray that this will be a platform that would bring insights to other women and men out there. It is a platform that will teach about Christ, teach about Christ, and demonstrate Christ. Um, no one is here to take any glory but the Lord himself. The theme of glorifying women, Lord, we, we bring it to you, O oh God, beautifying women, that you beautify us inside out that we, at the end of the day, will be molded and shaped into the vessels that you want us to be. Um, Lord, you make us the woman that you want us to be, that you can work through and pour through. And so we thank you for what you're doing in our individual lives. We thank you for the people that are watching the Lord. You minister to them, the Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, Ms. Ty, can you tell us a little bit on, let me, let me ask Dr. Uh, Dr. Dylan himself, um, can you tell us a little bit about your, the ministry, especially the one about Liberty University and the outreach in Africa? I think that is what I, I wanted to know more about. <laughs> yes, uh, praise the Lord. Well, thank you all for uh, welcoming and inviting me uh, on, on the show today. I don't take that lightly. Uh, and hopefully, uh, Father God, through the Holy Spirit, will uh, give us insight and wisdom that uh, the people that need to hear, whatever they need to hear, that uh, God will speak through us. Amen. Uh, as far as uh, our ministry, uh, we thank God that he allow us to even be a part. God talks about uh, us being co laborers together. And I, uh, as I uh, uh, grow, grow, uh, grew through the ministry, um, I found out that I could not uh, have my own agenda. A lot of times in the ministry, you have your own agenda and you're thinking about what you can do and how you can create your ministry. But I found out that uh, I had to abandon my agenda and I had to embrace God's agenda, which means I had to get to know how God thinks and uh, how he feels and what he's looking uh, for as far as us in, in this world. So uh, uh, what happened was God dropped a scripture into our into my uh, my heart, uh, and, and the scripture was uh, Ephesians two ten that we were His workmanship, and we were created into uh, Christ Jesus, and we were created for the purpose of doing good work. And then Romans eight twenty uh, nine that says that uh, wh whom He predestined, He uh, also. Uh, for uh, or then that we might be conformed to the image of his son, Christ Jesus. In other words, that our sole purpose in life is to be just like Christ Jesus. And so the, God gave us the name in his image. Um, that's been over 30 some years ago. And uh, from that, uh, our whole mandate has been just trying to uh, be like Christ. We use the phrase that we got to come to look like, act like, talk like, even be just like Christ Jesus. And with those things in mind, it can help, it can help keep us focused. Uh, then through that, God dropped in my spirit about a mission uh, that either you had a choice, you could be mission-minded or you could become a mission field. And my decision was to be mission-minded. And from that, we uh, ventured out into East Africa uh, and we created our, uh, in his um, Rich One Mission International. 
but the whole mission and theme was that uh, each one could reach one. Uh, since Babby Mason uh, did uh, did that song, and uh, we also was partnering together with her. But anyway, that's where Reach One Mission International came from. And from that, God laid on our heart a burden of uh, children. We've always our ministry ever, has always been about children. I talk a lot, so you stop me when I get when when you need to. Uh, and so, uh, and one of the interesting thing was that, uh, and then when I talk about the agenda, because normally. When you uh, into ministry, you worrying about how you're gonna pay the bills. And I confronted my father, uh, God, and saying, "You know, we have nothing but children. They don't have no money. And you go, you gotta go get them. You gotta feed them and everything." And uh, he just spoke to my spirit and say, "You take care of my children. I'll take care of you." Mm-hmm. And so over 35 years ago, that's what's been happening. And uh, in Africa, we went to Africa, uh, Uganda. And we found out that most of the children at that time, it was back in the uh, late 90s, that once a, a child finished primary school, uh, the odds of them going to high school or middle school, high school was very nil. And so God dropped in our heart to start uh, uh, building or providing for uh, high schools. And we were able to uh, build an all girls high school in uh, West Kenya. But also here, uh, uh, that we started with the learning center because the the, the thing was com- competition, and, and God spoke to me and said that uh, there's not nothing else, n- no one else could compete with you all in instilling Christian values into our children because we had the children from six thirty in the morning to about six thirty that evening, uh, solid even from ten to twelve hours, and there was nothing else, TV, nothing. So we had an influence in, in those children's lives. So that's one of the things that God uh, gave us and dropped in our spirit. And until the, today, we're doing that. And then from that, uh, we started with the academy again, trying to help shape and mold uh, our children with a biblical worldview. Most people uh, have a world, a secular worldview, and therefore they're missing the whole concept and uh, what God would want us and why we were created. Uh, now let me just say this. Uh, because I mentioned that our sole purpose is to uh, come to the conformity, to be like Christ. That's the whole whole purpose. And uh, but one of the things that uh, caused us to lose focus on that, because God say, uh, in, in trying to achieve that, people are not going to just willingly do that. So what God does, He allows stuff to happen to us. And if you recognize that, you'll understand the purpose of trial, tribulation, heartaches. Uh, misfortune that happened in your life. And that's uh, God's way of getting our attention so that we might know that we have to depend on him. Our total purpose is to depend on God. Uh, you know, uh, the scriptures say that we live, we move, we have our being, but really that's the whole purpose of it. I think I'll be quiet for right now. I'm sure I'll, I'll come back and talk more about it, but that's kind of how I got started uh, with ministry. Let me just say this because I'm not always uh, ran hard for God. Knew that se- at seven years old, knew God had a calling on my life. Knew that. And well, let me just say this because a lot of times people don't know. Uh, I actually thought that it was a curse to be a man of God, to be a preacher. I, th- I thought it was a curse because you we look selfishly from what you're missing if you have to be, the Bible talking about called out. Mm. And we somehow we think that we're missing out on life and not realizing that God would never, never cause us to miss out on anything that's good. Matter of fact, he said, I will not withhold any good things from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but what, 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 what happened was God spoke to him and said, son, if you would ever come to the point of knowing how much I love you. And I think that's so key why God is love, because that's so key if we can understand love, and especially from God's perspective. And, uh, and of course, the scripture tells us in Ephesians 3 that if we ever can come to that point, then we could be just like all the other saints. Of course, that caught my attention because, uh, I, you know, in today's environment, who could be like Moses, making the decision of not living in a wealthy and in, uh, in, uh, influential uh, environment? Uh, to go and live in a desert. Uh, and the Bible talk about he made a decision uh, to suffer with the people of God than to be a son of Pharaoh. Uh, 
I don't think I would have made that decision. I don't think very many people would make that decision. Or to be like Joseph here, he has an opportunity as a slave now to be promoted and have a sponsor. <laughs> yet he said, I won't, uh, I can't sin against God. And on and on and on and on. So that caught my attention. You're telling me if I know how much you love me, I can be like, they say, yes, son. And now I'm learning. And I pray God that we all would learn to know how much God love us. Because when you know that someone love you, then no matter what happened, you'll say he loved me. You know, you know, our boyfriend and girlfriend, people say, oh, he's no good for you. Yeah, but he loved me. <laughs> so <laughs> we, yeah, we get to know how much God loves us. OK, but when that happened to me, then I found out that there was no higher call and no greater achievement tend to be called uh, to spread the word. And the Bible talk about the, how beautiful are the feet so those who carry the message. But those are, are some of my my. Uh, encounter with Father God, and I'm still enjoying and, and, and learning more about my Father, and hopefully I'm trying to let it be displayed out of my life, which is the goal. Be like Him. Be like Him. Thank you so much. So, do you just have a presence in Uganda and Kenya, or is there other African countries that you do have? Yeah, uh, in, in, we started in Uganda and Kenya, East Africa, and uh, right now we are partnered in uh, Northern Uganda when uh, Joe Carney was... Uh, Ripping Havoc in that part of the country. And we partner with one of our daughters there uh, with her husband. They have 500 acres and we uh, they uh, help with the farm. Well, we help develop the farm so people during the wartime could come down. And now it's amazing how that farm has grown. They have now a school there that would house over 600 children. Uh, and top of the art, uh, as far as farming is concerned, especially in the area of uh, passion fruit. And of course, in Kenya, uh, we have uh, uh, the All Girls High School in, in Kenya, Western Kenya. And we're doing some uh, things now, especially in light of what's going on in the world with the uh, pan uh, pandemic. So we're doing that. Um, of course, we've been to Rwanda. We partner with Rwanda in sponsoring offer orphanage in uh, Sudan. We've been to Tanzania to my uh, my. my Malaya, Maya, whatever it's called. And then uh, West Africa. Uh, well, we've been to the Congo also and uh, done work there. We've uh, West Africa, uh, Ghana, and Nigeria. Oh, I'm waiting for Ghana and Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But that's kind of what, we, what we've been doing. That's good. That's good. That's uh, let, me, let me mention you asked about the Bible Institute. Uh, again, our whole purpose is that we'll have influence in developing uh, a, a biblical worldview in our people. So we start at, you know, babies when they are babies all the way through. And there's no reason why a person uh, have to go anywhere secular to get an education. So even through, uh, you know, the, 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 the formative year of, of, of a child and then the uh, school, uh, elementary, high school and then college, we have a Bible Institute sole purpose is to help develop uh, godly men and women of God that they might go and spread the word. Um, so with our Innocent Image Bible Institute, we are now uh, offering uh, uh, associate, bachelor, master, and doctor degree in biblical study. And we are hoping, well, we're in the process of accreditation, and we are hoping uh, to add more uh, programs, degree programs. So, okay. Awesome. That is very good. Thank you. Thank you for that, for building the kingdom of God with his word and training people like us in the Lord and walk in his image. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, Dr. Dylan, we actually brought you in today as well to talk about uh, women and beautifying women. Um, when we say beautifying women, how, what comes to mind from, you? Or how, from a man's perspective? How would you beautify your wife, or how would you beautify your other spouse or women in ministry? Well, I, I use the phrase of adding values. Normally, God would uh, allow us to have influ influence in certain things, uh, areas, and uh, our purpose is to add value, always to add value, always. Uh, and and uh, when I look at uh, a, a woman, um, when, whenever uh, from a man's and a woman's standpoint, that that man sole purpose is to add value. And we talk about beautifying. You know, um, we can do little things uh, because we are looking and we see what that person don't see. Uh, 
<laughs> for instance, you know, my wife would tell me, well, you know, button your shirt or uh, button your jacket or something. You know, I don't know that I'm not aware of it, but, you know, uh, one that's looking can do that. And as a, a man and a woman standpoint, especially in a relationship, you're privy to uh, be able to observe all of that. And uh, I, I think one of the problems is that, and I, I thought it happened to last week, uh, uh, Labor Day. That's what it was happening. It's an amazing thing that a lot of times we miss stuff. But um, uh, we, my son and his wife came over and they were having a little outing, a little cooking. And so my wife and I, we were there and we were just in the backyard and they were playing music. And so I said, come on, let's dance. And, you know, I, I, we, I don't do that very often, I guess. Uh, but we started dancing. And, and none but God, because I I looked into her eyes and God kind of dropped in my spirit. If you want to see a person, you have to look in the eye. It's amazing that people very rarely look in a person's eyes. You know, we 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 were trying to look all over the person and instead of looking in the eye. But uh, the Bible talk about the eyes are like the wind, the light or the wind into the heart. And uh, I saw a glow and a smile on my wife. I probably saw it when I first met her. But over time, you know, you, you miss that. And I saw that. And God just spoke to my spirit. You know, when you know when you're making someone happy and you're adding value to them, you're gonna, you have to look in the eyes. So that was, that was kind of very good to me because I'd sort of forgotten that and everything. So your question about beautifying a, 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 a woman or, or a man, because it goes both ways. And just really from if you God will give you insight in looking at a person and he'll tell you what needs to be adjusted. Uh, again, uh, the problem is that we're selfish. We are so selfish. And a lot of times we don't even realize that we are selfish. And if we could kind of be like Christ and the Bible talk about who loved the church well because he gave himself for the church. I mean, that, if you try to unpack that. I mean, that means forsaking yourself and your number one priority is to be beautify that person. I look at it this way is that no only person come as far as a woman or a man into your life. And uh, there's a hidden gem in that person. And somehow God has assigned uh, you as being responsible for bringing out all of the good value of that person. But normally we never think about that. We always think about me. What can you do for me? So our whole concept and our, our mindset has to change. And that's sometimes that's not easy because of uh, our culture, because of the way we are uh, uh, already uh, our makeup in terms of the way we perceive things. So I don't know if I'm answering that, but uh, no. that's kind of an a insight to that. Miss Ty, I don't know what you think, but I think that was very it was revealing to me because yes. when you look into a person's eyes, you're able to read so much. And what you're saying is so true. Um, I don't know about you, Miss Ty, but I don't think I experienced any of these incidents. When someone looks at me, it's like, okay, give me something. It's not to figure out what my need was and to help and to add the value that you're talking about. It was always give me, give me. They're taking from you most of the time. So, you know, that's very good. Miss Ty, what do you have to say about it? I think that was so profound because also how many times are the, the, the eyes looked into? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we look in the direction of someone, but we don't look into their eyes to assess what is really going on. I think if we even slowed ourselves, quieted ourselves for a moment and looked into the spot, the eyes of the person that is our spouse or that is our love interest, we could actually see that there's more than meets the eye. There's more than right in that moment that we could be asking for or we're busy doing our thing, but do we quiet ourselves enough to stop and really look into the eyes of that person? And when we're talking about the eyes, if we're talking about that eye that leads to the soul, that leads to the heart, you can tell. If you're in a relationship with your significant other and something is going on with them, no matter if they're wearing a smile or they put on a face, those eyes tell you the truth. And you can see like, oh my God, something's wrong. You're, you're not okay. But how many times do we deal with the fact that something is wrong and you're not okay? 
Instead, like Pastor said, oftentimes selfishness, selfish, selfish motive um, takes precedence. And in fast paced society, and I'm speaking from ministry because it's always a checklist of things to do. We don't have time for that. We don't have time. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving because we got to get X, Y, Z completed. But what are you going to do if the legs that's holding up the table falls down? We have to address it. So I think that's profound, Pastor. Looking into the eye. Thank you. Um, Mr. Do you have any questions? The other question I want to find out from a man's perspective is why do men, some men, go take the daughter of some, you know, go take someone else's daughter, bring them to their home, and are incapable in so many ways of taking care of that woman? Is that is that question directed to me? Yes, yes, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I, I think the Bible gives us a lot of insight. And I tell people, uh, and I kind of remind myself that the Bible is not a novel, that you read it as a novel. It's, it's an instruction. And uh, uh, there, there's... Uh, Many, many principle, and I, I believe that the Bible addresses every area of our life. Now, the Bible, someone say it in a humorous way that uh, before Adam got a wife, he got a, he had a job, <laughs> and and also that he had uh, some hand on training in how to uh, be responsible uh, because he was responsible for the keep upkeep of the garden and all of the other animals. So he didn't uh, come into the relationship uh, as a, a, a neophyte, but uh, he had some uh, uh, on-the-job training. And a lot of times, uh, men, um, we take that, don't take that uh, seriously. Uh, and knowing that, I, I look at it this way, that uh, everybody, uh, the, one, the number one thing that every, every human needs to know is what's your responsibility. And I'm talking from a male-female standpoint. Uh, uh, what's your role and your responsibility? And you need to know the difference. A lot of times people are getting to a role and they uh, uh, violated their uh, responsibility and try to uh, assume responsibility for someone else. But then I also tell ladies, especially in, in marriage and uh, counsel, uh, that, that is the man's responsibility, especially in the area of uh, uh, making sure that the house is run properly and that there's sufficient uh, 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 food or whatever, resources in the house for, for the house now, whatever that may be. Uh, and, but it's a man's responsibility. And it's amazing how uh, uh, that's one of the, the major uh, thing of a lady knowing that uh, security, I call it security. But uh, they, they fail to realize that there's a man's responsibility. And it doesn't, ma that doesn't mean that a lady can't help provide, but the, 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 the buck stop with the man. And I tell ladies, I say, you know, if, if the light bill needs to be paid uh, and it's his responsibility to see that uh, or, or be able to come to a decision how the light bill is going to be paid or whether or not we're going to be in darkness, it's his responsibility and his decision. But what happened is that impatient, a lady, uh, she, first of all, she started nagging and, you know, you just lovingly remind your husband or your, your significant other that this these are some of the things that need to happen. But one of the biggest violations is that the lady will go ahead and do it herself because she said, well, he's not going to do it. I'll do it. And I said, it's the biggest mistake because uh, what a guy does, uh, he's going to do it when he's ready. And, and instead of nagging, just encourage him in, in, a, in a way of reminding and just and you do it. Just say, I have full confidence that you're going to make that decision. And whatever you do, fine with me. You're the, you're the head. Uh, but, but a guy, if he know you're going to go do it, he's not, he's going to, for the rest of his life, he'll sit back and wait till you do it again. That's not your responsibility. Okay. Uh, so don't take on that responsibility. And then the first thing, well, what if, well, if it happened fine, I mean, it's the same way trusting God, 
God's responsibility is to take care of us and to protect us. And when I try to get ahead of God and do it myself, remember, again, uh, Scripture talks about in this way, uh, uh, it's, it's a principle that I think we can uh, use the application. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. In other words, he's saying that's my responsibility. And just like in any other area you, that you can use that and apply that to any other area, if, if it's your responsibility, I'm not going to uh, come and violate and usurp your um, uh, your authority by taking on that responsibility. Uh, and, and I think we, we are in a society, number one, that uh, if we admit it, we are impatient. And uh, the next thing is that uh, we we kind of uh, self-prophesy the worst. If I don't do this or if this don't get done, this is going to happen. You know, maybe that maybe God want that to happen. So you'll learn a lesson that you still got to depend on God, not your husband, not this one or not. But anyway, from that's that's kind of what I would answer to that one in terms of uh, um, uh, and understand what I said at first that, uh, you know, uh, from from Scripture, Adam uh, had that ex uh, experience already in taking it. And God made sure that he knew how to take care of something if he was going to give me a responsibility. And I think God purposely, purposely, uh, 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 did that. But if you know, that's really, if you look at the thread, uh, uh, you know, God didn't first made the man, he prepared for the man, <laughs> he prepared a place for the man, and then after the man was uh created, then he brought the woman on the scene. See, and so it's not that complicated. Wow, um, <laughs> it looks like you, uh, you are one of. Uh, I don't know, like rare um, man of God out there that you're speaking the truth. What you're saying is the truth. And it's just unfortunate that our society and even the women, Miss Ty, that we don't, like you said, we overstep our boundaries. We, we go in, into responsibilities that we ought not to. The fear of if I don't do it, the lights will be shut off, the, light, the water will be cut off. That fear alone, I will jump in and pay the bills. Yeah. And, yeah. So we've exchanged. Yes. And then we get frustrated because we exchange the roles. Yeah. So it's like he said, um, if this is the case, then I'm trusting God. It's not even that I'm, I, yeah, I put my trust in my husband, but my trust first is in God. And I trust God that God is going to get this situation handled. I'm not going to exchange the role. Now, if my husband comes and asks me, can you assist in this area? Can you help me in this area? Now I'm involved. But if he tells me I'm going to take care of that, I'm going to, I'm going to let him take care of that. Yeah. And I'm going to sit, I'm going to encourage, I'm not, like Pastor said, I'm not going to nag, I'm not going to, it is what it is. So if those lights get cut off, or the mortgage, there's a problem, <laughs> yeah. then I'm just going to look and, you know, so, so again, yes, like he said, we're exchanging roles, we're taking on responsibility that's not ours, and then we'll get frustrated. And like he said, if you do that, the man, is, he will get comfortable with you doing that and he's going to allow you to continue to do it uh, look, until you finally explode and let, say let, something let, is wrong and then everybody's going to wonder what's going on let me just let me just say this uh uh, uh, uh in my i really strongly believe that a woman's role is kind of as a reminder but uh but you got to do it and, and we so often make that mistake. You have to do it in a way, I, I don't want to use the word positive, but this kind of way is like that. Instead of negative, you can say, you know, baby, I know uh, you may have forgotten um, the light bill is due, but I have full confidence you, you're you going to handle it. Uh, but if I can be of any help, let me know. You know, you want to keep that door open like that, okay? Uh, that type that type of thing. But again, again, uh, the, the scripture in Proverbs, and, and, and this is what I'm trying to say. Again, principle, but then using those principles in applicable way. Uh, Proverb uh, uh, says that um, the, 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 the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Okay? But the fear will come upon you. That, that type of concept. Now, here's what I'm saying. When, when, I, when I hear that scripture, 
what we are tending, and let me let me use it in the in the sense of uh, husband and wife. Okay, you know, uh, instead of us saying what our desire, we express our fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope my husband don't cheat on me. I, I hope this marriage lasts. I hope this is this be a good marriage. That's the expression fear. In other words, saying, Lord, I thank you that this is going to be a solid marriage. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to direct our path. Just trying to make your request. My request, Father God, is that I have a solid marriage. My request is that I be able to uh, read and have insight into my wife, her desire. And I, 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 I purpose, Father God, that uh, I'm treating my wife as you treated the church. And that my ultimate responsibility is that there's no, uh, what that scripture say? No, um, Blemish, no, help me, y'all. A church without, oh, without spot or blemish. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that's all of our responsibilities for the husband and the wife. My responsibility is that I need to make sure when it's all said and done, there's no spot, no wrinkle. So every day I'm saying, did I get in the wrinkles out today? Did I help get in the wrinkle? Am I trying to do that? And, you know, like I say, selfishness, because a lot of times we want to look at ourselves and take care of ourselves. And uh, we forget, again, Scripture says, if you try to take care of yourself, try to save your life is the way it says you're going to lose it. So, but, okay. I think that we should have a conference. <laughs> we think, I think that we have, you know, sending people your way to really, it's just basic foundational information and training. If men could think that way, I don't think there will be a lot of separation of divorce in, in this country. The way it is, is because women will naturally will be partners when they see that love and you know undivided attention come from the man. Honestly, okay. There is a question on the. It, it, the question reads: How long would a woman wait for a man before taking action? The remain silent. How long would a woman have to wait for the man before taking action? The man remain silent. So how long do we have to wait? Um. You've asked and, and nothing is being done. How long do you have to wait till you get thrown out of your home because the mortgage is late? <laughs> well, the, the question the question becomes, if you take on that responsibility, what is that going to do? Is it helping or are you putting a bandage on it? Or you, uh, if, if, the, if he's not willing to take on his responsibility, then he's not uh, ready to be a husband uh, uh, to that family. Now, again, uh, the, the question is, what's, what's the hindrance? And, uh, you know, if you really stop and think about it, a lot of times people, or especially men, uh, they are not confident in, in where they are. And uh, they are just as fearful as anyone else. That's why a woman can help uh, get that confidence. And sometimes... Uh, and that's why if, if you heard what I say that uh, I'm not saying that a woman needs to be totally solid in that area because but you got to be careful how you approach that. You, it can't be in a threatening way because, you know, he might say, baby, you know, uh, I really don't know how to do that. Uh, what, what, what's your suggestion? But it ha he has to feel uh, a freedom to do that. So you need to make sure that you open up uh, where it's a safe zone. Mm -hmm. People don't like to be vulnerable. They know it. And then what people don't realize is that once you enter into a, a, a marital situation, you're saying, I'm ready to be vulnerable. I'm ready to be naked in front of you. You can see all of my weaknesses. But we, you know, and again, again, I, I believe with all my heart, it, 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 the, 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 the foundation to that is trust in God. Because if I truly believe that uh, 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 God allows nothing to happen unless it's going to give him glory. And let me say this to you all, very, very, you know, again, uh, through as you grow through Christ, you, 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 you'll see this if you're really looking. Uh, one of the things that has tremendously helped me, especially in these latter years, uh, that uh, in, in, in John 18, 19, uh, Jesus says something that's very profound, and it shouldn't have been, but it was. Uh, let me just briefly say that this is after coming out of the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus made the comment that uh, uh, he was struggling with uh, what I want versus what my father wants, And he, he kind of resigned to the fact that 
what you want is more important than what I want. But then later on, when uh, the people came to, to get him, when now, <laughs> you, you know, stuff hit the, the, the highway and it's actually happening. Uh, and Peter being uh, impulsive, you know, uh, cut the guy's ears off. But then Jesus says something that really caught my attention. He said, he, his question was, shouldn't I drink the cup that my father has given me? Mm. And I said, wow. So when stuff come in my life, I'm saying uh, uh, God has allowed this to come in my life to see what my response is going to be. Am I going to truly trust God in that area instead of, you know, uh, reacting impulsively out of my own uh, will and what I would do? Let me stop and see what God, since the Holy Spirit is our leader, our teacher, our guide, and the Bible said he'll lead us into all truth. So let me try to hear what he is saying. And let me make sure that my response is always going to be with the way God would want me to respond. And let me tell you something. The, 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 the thing is that, well, can I do that? Well, uh, Hebrew uh, uh, 13, 15 tell us that, uh, first of all, that God said that uh, where sin abound, much more grace abound. So in, what that, in, what that means is that no matter what happened, God has given me grace to overcome this. And uh, I look at it as God giving the power and the desire to do his will. That's really the bottom line. So if, if I believe that God's going to uh, give me the, the, the desire and the power just to do his will, so my response ought to be the way God would have me to respond. Okay, so that's, again, you know, when, when you hear that, uh, the question is, how long should I wait? Well, until you hear clearly from God saying, leave it alone. And sometimes God will tell you, leave it alone. Yeah. Don't you say that, Okay. Uh, when I get in that, when I get in that situation, let me tell you what I do. Psalms 25, one unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, my mind, will, and emotion, everything I'm lifting up to you. I'm surrendering that to you. Oh my God, I trust you. I want that. I want myself, my mind, my will, my emotion to know that I'm trusting God. I, and I, when what I'm saying there, I want to do everything that's pleasing him. Yes. Don't yes. let me be near the same. <laughs> In other words, I, don't let me be disappointed. Don't let my enemy triumph over me. I, now, if you want my enemy to triumph over me, then praise the Lord. Fine. But if you hear what I'm saying, because what our concept of our enemy triumph over us is not really the way God look at it. You know, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Nebuchadnezzar thought that uh, he was triumphing over the three Hebrew boys by throwing them in the fiery furnace. But we know the end of the story. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, the, the Bible tells us that the devil thought that he had Jesus the right way he wanted. But then Jesus made an open show again, you know, trust. Sometimes the trust in God. OK, I'm, I'm talking too much. No. Miss Ty, take over. I mean. Dr. Dylan is just full packed with wisdom. Yes. Hey, if it's okay, we can have like a counseling session. Also. We need to have counseling yeah. sessions. I've been saying for ages, um, um, Dr. Dylan does a whole teaching on character. Um, there are these different characters. That is what truly became the foundation of my experience with God. And we went through the uh, Blackaby experiencing God as a church together. So um, his teaching and the profoundness of his love, it's, it's the love of the word of God, the love of the presence of God that I know this wisdom is birthed in and we, we appreciate you, Pastor. I want, before we move on, I do want to ask him a question because this is something that's really big on my heart. As a woman in ministry, um, a lot of women of God in ministry, are, they suffer in silence. Um, they suffer in silence. They have uh, the ministry. They're, they're a wife, um, a mother. They, God is also, many of them, God has also placed ministry in. 
And a lot of time in ministry, I want you to speak from your perspective. Women are silenced. It is more so today that we're we're able to um, to share and and spread the word and the love of God. But there are a lot of women that have an anointing and a powerful ministry on the inside of them, but they they're they're being silenced. And I want you to speak to those women, whether they are um, engaged to be married, whether they are already married, and they feel the fire and the pull of God and the push of the Holy Spirit to release what he's placed in them. But they're in a situation where it's being squashed. Okay. Uh, that's a big subject. Uh, women's in, in ministry. You got to realize... Uh, we, we use that scripture in Second Corinthians, uh, not being ignorant of Satan's device. Uh, yet we fall for the ploy all the time. And uh, you know, uh, uh, ladies are so powerful in ministry, uh, yet uh, you've been suppressed in that area. Uh, first, The first thing that when you started uh, talk, talking, the first thing that hit me was, uh, covering because uh, if if you suffering and you suffering in in uh, silent, that means you don't have anyone to go to. So covering is very important and uh, accountability. So a lot of ladies and again, if you go back and look at the way it's, it's structured, most ladies who's been called of God uh, really can't go to that church and say I'm called. I'm a woman of God. Uh, God can call me to preach and uh, and be embraced. Very few uh, ladies can do that. And if they do it, they're still with it a stigma. So the first thing I'm saying is that uh, uh, covering. And we as pastors or bishop or whatever leaders, from a man's standpoint, we have to recognize that God has no respect of person. Uh, and, you know, it's to me, it's so simple. But yet we fall into that trap because all over the world, ladies are, are, are you know, suppressed. And uh, we're still human. Uh, and I remember a long time ago, again, a long time ago, <laughs> whenever, you know, uh, I had to bring one's attention to, wait a minute, when uh, when God uh, called, he, he he uses the word uh, man. Of course, that's, that was the style of, of writing. But when you go back and look at that, he mean mankind. Human being, homo sapiens, human, the human being, and yet we would take that. And I said, well, if that's the case, then when uh, when Jesus said, uh, "If a man, uh, 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 whosoever uh, come after me, let him deny himself," or, or things like that, or where use a man, was they excluding a woman? And of course, they don't know, no. But in other scripture, they want to pick and choose. Here's my point. My point is that when God speak, he you know, he makes it very clear if he's speaking to a woman from a gender standpoint. But again, we're lazy and, and uh, not only that, but yeah, lazy, we're lazy. And uh, we, we embrace what we brought up, what we were brought up with. And we, you know, sacred cows and we don't want to change that, those type things. Uh, I, I'm, and I don't want to veer off from that subject, but my point is that you need a covering where somewhere you can go and talk. And uh, we, we have to be able to find that. And we, from a man's standpoint, we need to uh, be able to, to provide that for ladies uh, to do that, okay? Pastor, uh, let me now, yeah. right there. What if you are in a marriage and you're saying that, hey, let's go and talk to our covering about this situation and your spouse or the significant other says no. We're not going to do that. We're in ministry. Too many people are looking at us and we can figure this out. They're a man just like I'm a man. And they refuse the guidance or they refuse the counsel. What 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 then? Okay. Uh, that's that's kind of a sensitive there because uh, from a man uh, makeup, we are private. We, we don't want nobody knowing our business, if you will. Yet we'll go in the street and talk about our business to somebody we don't know. But uh, and, and of course, the whole uh, drill is that nobody know me anyway. But uh, we, we don't want our people who know us to know what's really going on. Uh, a lady have to be have to really uh, uh, thread that kind of gently and use wisdom in that area. Uh, and, and uh, you know, let, let me do I, I 
I don't know, it may not relate to this. I go back um, whenever um, there was a situation in my first marriage. And of course, there were many, many situations. I don't want nobody to think that, you know, I just woke up one, you know, I was born and I had I, these views and this comes over time. And, uh, you know, it's, one of the things that kept us out of argument was that she would say, well, I'm going to turn that over to your father. And, and then when I thought about that, you know, in the business world, whenever we have a situation, they immediately tell you, you need to escalate. Yet in our marriage, we don't know how to escalate. And sometimes you might have to bypass the pastor and go straight to God and say, and let him know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk, tell God. And if God don't do anything, then maybe nothing don't need to be done. I mean, now again, it goes back to trusting God there. Now, you can also say, well, I'm, I'm going to go in and I'm going to share this with my pastor. And, uh, and, and, and so he'll know. So sometimes, you know, when a man knows somebody else, know that. And then the pastor have to use wisdom also. Because, uh, again, it's all providing a safe environment for people to be able to, to share and, 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 and to open up themselves. And um, people are, are, are reluctant in doing that because they think people are going to take advantage. Of course, they have a lot of proof for that. So from a pastor standpoint, you got to make sure you have to make sure that you 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 are, are providing a safety and, you know, confidentiality. And I, I can remember I can remember times in that as a pastor, people would tell me things. And uh, my first question would be, am I f free to share this with my wife or someone? And if they say no, then I will, I will never share it. And I would tell them, uh, this is why I wouldn't want to share it with her, because she may have a different perspective, and I think she can give give us some more insight. But if the person say no, then I wouldn't do it. Again, providing that safety. And after a period of time, that person may come back and say, well, maybe we can, once you bring your wife in, let us see what she, you know, things like that. But again, people want to know that they're saved. And so many times people have, their their trusts have been violated, and you know that's if I'm answering the question. I don't know. Uh, again, everything boils down to. Let, let me just say it this way: when I say escalate, oh, don't tell me my phone going out. Oh my god. I need to plug up my phone, I think. This don't make sense. But um, let let me just go get my, my charger here. So just, I think that because, yes, I don't believe it. Yeah. So is there anything that you want to add to that? Because I still think that, and I really want to hear a solution um, in regards to how do we maneuver that? Um, there's a lot of women and I, I can't, I can't speak from the male perspective. I'm pretty sure that men are suffering in a capacity as well, but there's a lot of women that are really sold out for God that are really passionate about their marriage. They're passionate about the ministry, but they're running up against a brick wall when it comes to getting clarity, when it comes to dealing with issues that are in house. Yeah, the church may look perfect. Everything may look like it's going well. But what about this issue in our own house that needs to be dealt with? That issue that is killing me, that issue that is um, suppressing me and not allowing um, not just me, but us as a team, as a husband and wife. Because what happens is in marriage, the two are now one. And if, if, my, if my right foot hurts, I don't care how good the left foot feels. I'm not about to walk as fast. So it's it's very, everything, the Bible even tells me, you know, everything's going to take attention now to this right, this, this foot that's hurting. We need to be able, a pastor was talking about this earlier, about looking to the eye. Let's not look beyond everything around us. Let's look at the heart of the matter. And right now, you know, we were sharing a, a story that happened this week. We'll go into that maybe another time. But the thing is that 
People are dying in silence. One of the things that I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me this week, I was watching a show and it was talking on the show. The enemy was whispering in this particular person's ear and this person had been incarcerated. They were um, locked up in jail and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there are spiritual prisons right now. There are destiny prisons right now where people he is called to to ministry. He is called to make impact. He is called to do great things. But because the enemy is whispering in their ear through a significant other, through a spouse, whatever, however he can, he's caging destinies. And um, I just want to really speak to, you know, that woman or that, whether she's a pastor's wife or whether she is um, a, a, a woman that is being uh, engaged right now. Your most important relationship that you're going to ever have is your relationship with Almighty God. You must be so one with God first so that you are able to not miss the red flags. The red flags are key. And as we're bringing Pastor in, I'm going to just share a few. You want me to share them now or you want us to hold yes, on? Yes, yes. Pastor, I just want to find out how Pastor is doing over there. Is he back? I, I'm. I, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, but can't see you. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Uh, eh. It say you're alive, but here. I think okay. you tilt the phone to see yourself. We can we can see the office, but we can't see your face right now. I think it's frozen. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you, I guess you're just going to have to hear me and not look at me. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, let's just go on. Okay, Mr. I'm, getting, I'm getting feedback. Is that? Um, we I don't hear the feedback. Okay. I, I can. Could you position the phone how you had it before you, you took, you, you charged, you recharged it? It, it seemed like the screen is frozen. Uh, there's a red, is in a rectangular red uh, deal, and Maybe I can just because get a your, your charge, his charge went down so low, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Miss Ty, go ahead. Let's go ahead, yes. Yes, so um, some of the things I just wanted to point out really quickly as far as uh, red flags, and because I, I don't know how much longer... God is going to allow us to do this, but I, I really want to share this with you because this is on my heart. Um, a couple of red flags. Number one, and I'm talking about these are red flags before you say I do. Really look at this. And it's a red flag that a conversation needs to be had in your marriage if you're experiencing this as well. Number one, if there is a lack of enthusiasm or excitement about your personal wins, if you as a woman have had a recent graduation, if you are celebrating anything, you got a promotion on the job, you got a raise, you got anything that is celebratory and your significant other or your spouse does not celebrate with you, this is a red flag. This is a red flag because that shows a sign of jealousy and you cannot work together if you're jealous of each other. As a matter of fact, your win is his win. Your win is a win for the relationship. It's a win for God. It's a win to move forward. So seeing a lack of enthusiasm, that's a red flag that needs to be addressed. Wait, Number two. You address mm -hmm. that whilst you're already in the marriage. If you're already in the marriage, you address it directly. You have to be able to say, hun, you know, this just happened. How do you feel? I mean, I'm, I'm so excited about that. What's I, I, I'm sensing something. Is everything OK? Because you want to make sure that they're not reacting to something else. Just actually before. I can't tell you this enough. In your marriage, you are going to have to be for it. Yeah, you're going to be sweet. You're going to be nice. You're going to let the Holy Spirit lead you. But you are going to have to communicate. Communication doesn't work if you don't open your mouth. You have to speak. You can't assume that your husband is going to read your mind. It's not osmosis. 
you have to be able and you have to feel make it an inviting and a comfortable environment where you're doing it and do it in a way that is inviting. Like Pastor said, it can't be in a nagging way. I know I have a very strong personality and, you know, many of us have strong personalities, but I know how to talk. You know, be sweet, be nice, but get to the point. Address it. And if you see that, hey, this is a continuous thing that's happening, whether they tell you there's no problem or not, there's a problem. Um, and you've got to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Um, the second, um, oh, and that, that leads into the second, competitive. We talked about this before. The, in the anointing, there's no competition, Okay. You could never do what I can do, and I can never do what you can do. The, the anointing complements. It does not compete. There's no such thing. While somebody is jealous about somebody else's gift or talent, they're wasting away at theirs. You should be completely focused on what it is that God has given you and placed in your hand for you to move forward and to you to maximize it and deliver it to the world. I'm too occupied with trying to take care of what God has given me to be looking over in someone else's window. So if in your courtship or in your marriage, you find that there's constant competition, that's a problem. But Miss Ty, I, I, I have, mm -hmm. I have this, is a, this could take another two hours, but this, I have a question. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. seen the issue. You have talked about the issue. It is not, you don't have a glimmer light that is going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. You are constantly being suppressed, being told, mm -hmm. oh, you can only do this. You can only go this far. Listen, in fact, don't prophesy in this church. Mm. You understand? So at that point, you either shut up in the church. What, what are you going to do? Because as tell you. if he is the head, if he is a yeah. pastor, or if he's an elder, or if he's an usher, or whatever, he is the spiritual head of the home, you would have to listen to some extent, because he, assuming he's a senior pastor, you would have to listen to that. Absolutely. After, absolutely. And that's what um, people don't realize, is when you are a woman of God and you're a pastor's wife, even if you hear something from God that your spouse hasn't heard yet, you don't usurp it, but it's a painful place to be. And you have to go in prayer and fasting. And you that's where the accountability part really comes in. Unfortunately, like, like I was really wanting pastor to hit that. How do we get to that place of accountability? Because oftentimes it's still, we, we can't even get to the person that could speak to them, that they would even listen to, or it can turn into a huge disagreement or a huge argument. It can look good inside of that meeting, but when you get home, it's cold, it's silent. The life is getting sucked out of the atmosphere. Let me say this loud and clear. That's not God. God doesn't behave that way. And you know, that's also a form of manipulation. That's true. Which, since oftentimes women who speak out in ministry are called Jezebel and witches, hey, let me tell you something. That's, that manipulation is a form of witchcraft. We can go really deep into this. Into that one, yes, we, we can. Because um, when a woman is confident, number one, her confidence is coming from, Doctor doctor's trying to come back on, and he is on um, right okay. now. Okay, awesome. Awesome. We got you, Pastor. Yay. Oh, no. We can't hear you, though. He's using ah. the computer, maybe. He's using the computer. We can't hear you. We can't hear the volume. Yeah. Is there any way for you to call back in on the phone? Okay. Sorry, guys, about that interruption. So what we were saying was, yes, you've, as a woman that is confident in God, you know God is saying this. Let me, let me use another example. Husband and wife, pastor and, pastor and pastor's wife, they are home. The wife may have some kind of revelation. Oh, honey, maybe can we do this for the church? It's moving in this direction or I can do this. 
For some reason, the men don't listen, but they'll listen to a congregants that will give the same advice. Yes. Um, that, again, that red flag was shown earlier, too. And we didn't, we didn't acknowledge it. Uh -huh. And that came because what it is, I wrote that down as one of the, um, the, the red fa uh, flags. You'll notice that that person also makes decisions without you. Yes. That person that does not take the revelation that you believe God just gave you is also the same person that will make decisions about the ministry, decisions about your vision without you. And I want pastor to speak to that because like I said, his late wife and he built everything that um, they're the ministries together. Pastor, we're talking about when a spouse, let's say the wife, God gives her a, um, a revelation about something and she shares it with the husband, Pull your, can you hear us, Pastor? Yes, I can. Okay, pull your camera down a little bit. And um, and we're talking about that revelation coming and she's sharing it with him. And he might not take it from her, but he'll take it from a congregant or from an outside pastor. And also making decisions about the vision, about the ministry outside of the wife instead of with her. And I know I witnessed you um, and Mama Dylan make decisions together. I want, can you speak to that? <laughs> Communication. <laughs> That's bottom line. Um, again, see, one of the biggest things is that people don't realize that you're partnering together, that you're one. And that uh, we talk about uh, walking in singleness of purpose. And that doesn't just happen. Uh, that's something that is uh, uh, created and established over many, many, uh, you know, time. And, and uh, again, and in bars down to being threatening. Uh, most pastors, uh, whether it's a wife or whoever, uh, may have a feeling that they're being threatened or they're being usurped. And keep in mind, uh, your, your congregation do talk. And they send nonverbal uh, uh, messages. Oh, look, she's running the church. She's trying to take over, blah, blah, blah. And see, all of that needs to be understood. But this happened not in the church. This happened at home. You create this relationship, and not just from a church standpoint, but in every area. And it's communication, talking. See, when, I, when, when I'm talking to someone and we're communicating, I know when something happens, they're not, it's not threatening. I know, okay, I understand that, okay? Uh, then I would, would you, you talk about my, my late wife. If she would, she would say, no, no, we can't have that. I know where she's coming from. She's not usurping authority here. She's just saying, I, I recognize something because I, I understand people differently from you are. And, you know, we are different. And so, but that, that didn't just happen. I mean, we, many, many, uh, just talking. Uh, the, the, one of the best things as far as therapy for any marriage is just to talk. But for that to happen, you have to be on the same pages. Uh, and one of the things is that people are, are, are they're, they're doing things differently at different time. Uh, <laughs> if you hear what I'm saying, uh, normally when, when the wife wants to talk, maybe I'm tired and I, or I'm doing something I don't want to talk. Or when she wants to talk, then, you know, I'm, I'm running doing something else. But again, we if we start aligning ourselves and, and, and kind of be on the same page, and sometimes I may have to, or uh, change my my attitude or my ways or the way I want to do things because if I recognize communication is so important. Uh, now you know, uh, unless you're telling me a husband is a pastor and he doesn't recognize his wife as his helpmate and that they're they're one and that they're pastoring together uh, because everything that everything your wife does, the people are going to look at it and look at it as a reflection on you. And everything you do, they're looking at her as a reflection of her. And, and people got to realize that, especially uh, uh, er, any husband or wife, but especially pastors, you have to recognize that, you know. So uh, let, me, I mean, let, me, let me ask you a question then in regards to that, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, with husband and wife being in ministry together. How did you handle that if the congregation or if people from the outside try to squash her, try to silence her or say she shouldn't, she shouldn't have an opinion on this 
or she shouldn't be speaking. How, how do you, how did you handle that? Well, first of all, first of all, uh, my wife and I, we were one. Keep in mind, we won. And uh, and, and that's done. It's 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 it's, it's applied to any situation. When someone says something about another person, and that person is not around, your position is to defend that person. Never agree. Mm -hmm. Now, especially if it's your wife, and you let have no no, uh, you know, and set them straight in that area. You got to do it in a loving way. But you you know, don't ever be in a compromising situation where you're cutting down your spouse and agreeing with someone else. You don't do that. You don't do it, you know. And if, if nothing else, say, well, I think you just misunderstood what she said. You know, something simple, you know, you got to do some way you can just nip it. Oh, no, no, you just misunderstood what she said, you know. And oh, by the way, uh, I'm in agreement with that. That if you look at it differently, you know, you can do those kind of things versus, uh, you know, and again, you know, your actions speak loud. If, you're, if your body is saying, no, she didn't mean that, but your, I mean, you're, you're, you're verbally saying she didn't mean that, but your body is saying she didn't did it again. They'll read that much louder. So, <laughs> you know, you just got to be in, one of, you know, in agreement with what you're saying. But again, communication, because, you know, I know my wife. No, no, no. She got, you know, if, if, beside me. And Jesus, she loved this ministry more than anything else, you know. But you got to be convinced of that, uh, and so you know, then you can you can easily uh, 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 present your case and and, and c cause others to do that. But you know, and again, if a pastor feels threatened by his wife, he needs to go back and uh, check with God on on his calling. <laughs> you see why well, I love this man, God. <laughs> go back and check on your calling. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Whoa. Expound on that, Pastor. <laughs> Which one? Go check on your calling. I mean, because Pastor, what you said is so key, and unfortunately, I've seen it with my own eyes, where a man of God can feel threatened by the gift of God in his wife. And it's not that and and it takes a long time to accept that. It doesn't well, just let, 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 let me let me just say this. Mm -hmm. We all have this problem. Uh, I th I think the cliche goes that well, if you realize that uh, God has placed all of us in a land, mm -hmm. and what we have to guard against is looking in the land to my left or right and trying to uh, 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 adopt or imitate the land or the person that's running that land. And we don't realize that my land is very unique. My calling is very unique. It may not be like TDJ, but I don't have, I'm not a TDJ. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, I remember my pastor, God bless his soul, he's in heaven now. Uh, my, I've never, all my life, I've never hoop or try to imitate nobody else, never. And uh, in being a, I came up in a Baptist uh, environment. Of course, everything I did was contrary to the Baptist. But uh, <laughs> uh, um, I remember when uh, I was when I would preach with, uh, with nothing but ministers, and the ministers. I remember one in particular. He said, "Well, you need a little more value." <laughs> and my pastor was there. God, you know, I go back and look at it. There was nothing but God protecting me because my pastor was there. And he came to me immediately and he said, son, you don't have to imitate nobody else. You do what God has given you. And he said something very, just, I always remember. He said, Dr. Stanley don't yell in who? <laughs> uh, 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 Kenneth Hagen don't yell in who? Everybody don't have to yell in you. And that, I'm a young, I'm a young, young uh, uh, minister then. And that spoke value in my life. Again, again, I was just blessed and fortunate that God had uh, a pastor in my life, uh, you know, who was not, feel, he didn't feel threatened or nothing, nothing like that. So, you know, but thank God for that. But, I'm, I, you know, I don't think I'm any different. I think God would uh, uh, supply it to everybody. The question is, do you recognize it? Because let me just say this. Uh, I had an opportunity to leave that church. At a very young minute, very young in my in, in, in my my Christian walk. I mean, very young, and and I saw everything in that church. Okay, 
But uh, and and all my friends, you know, they tell you, oh, you know more than the pastor. That's a lie for the pastor. You know more than the pastor. Why are you there? Da 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 da. And all I could, and it wasn't me. God knows it wasn't me. But out of my spirit and uh, came out of my mouth was, well, all I know, God planted me here, and I'm not gonna uproot myself. And I said, and God knows, I look back over the ministry, and that was such a blessing to me. Uh, and it was so, it was so. It's not funny. But show you how God can do it, because everybody in this com in the community wanted, and at some point, if there was a ministry, they came and joined that church just to be under that pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> anyway, I get I I, I get off. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. That's fine. That's very good. Thank you. Let's yeah. Go. My point. My point is this. My point is this. You have to value what God has given you. And you have to use what God has given you the way God has given it to you. You can't look to the left or the right or try to imitate nobody else or try to be like nobody else. Just be you. Yes. Amen. Okay. And so in leading, I think you were about to ask me a question, Avina. No, I was going to say uh, continue with your red flag. Yeah. So when, when Pastor just said that, like, you can only be you, that leads into that third red flag that God dealt with me about. If you feel the need to water yourself down, if you feel like you must water yourself down, you feel guilty for being who you are, that's a red flag. If I have to constantly um, feel uh, water myself down so that that person feels comfortable, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to say too much. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quench. Let me give you an example. I, I had to minister at this particular conference. And when I ministered at the conference, I'm telling you, it was in Chicago. I was living in Dallas at the time. I think I went to visit this conference and the power of God came. It was so prophetic. They called me there to do prophetic worship and dance. And it was so powerful that people came the next day. They didn't have room for people because they saw the live stream. And everybody was like, who is? And it was in a, um, it was another nationality that I was there. So they was like, who is this little lady? This is fire. And they came. But guess what happened? Before I um, went out on the platform the next night, the person, the organizer of it told me that they didn't want me to flow that way that they call me to flow a different kind of way. But I was flowing in the capacity that God gave me. And sometimes in our relationships with people, this is who God called you to be. Not that it's going to be um, something that is going to be disrespectful, dishonoring. But if God has put a word in your mouth, that he's put a song in your heart, or he's giving you a character the way that you are, you can't water that down. You can't stop being who God calls you to be and start imitating the imagination of someone else. God has already created you in his image. You need to walk in that. You need to live in that. And if that person is called to your life and you're called to that person's life, then they're going to appreciate the call of God and the way that you were created. If you water it down to make them feel comfortable, you will be watering. You're going to be killing your own self. And you're going to live in a, an existence of suffocation. That's a red flag. You can't do that. Um, the other thing, if the person isolates you from family and friends, if the person only wants you to themselves only, they don't want anyone else speaking into your life. They don't want you speaking into anyone else's life, not just around you guys immediately, but your family, your friends, if you guys go somewhere, you can't never be with family and friends. That is a red flag. You don't want no one controlling you that way. Not that you're not going to, definitely you're connected to your spouse or to your significant other, but you have to have the freedom to be able to talk and to live life with other people. If this is another red flag, if the person sows doubt consistently into your life, if the person sows doubt about your dreams, about your vision, about your goal for your life, that's a red flag. You can't water me if you don't believe in me. 
And if you're saying this to destroy me, then this is even worse. <laughs> You're supposed, we're supposed to be watering each other. In marriage, we water each other. Like Pastor talked about, we bring out the best in each other. You beautify me, I beautify you. You see the gift of God on me, you speak into it. I see the gift of God in you, I speak into it. I use all of my capacity to build you up and to, and to be a support in every area. And you do the same to me. If the person de um, degrades um, their previous spouse, if they degrade them or they talk down about the previous spouse, a significant other, to you, get in line because you're next. That's a red flag. Because they were with that person before. They loved that person before. So you don't, you don't, um, take in that negativity. Don't let a man or a woman come to you and tell you negative. All they do is bombard you with that was that no good man, that no good woman. They did this, that if they do that to you, that's toxic. And that is a red flag because you're setting yourself up for the same disgrace for your name to be drug in. My mama used to say down in Louisiana, they say, hey, if a dog bring a bone, they are gonna take one with them. <laughs> so we, we watch that, be careful. Another one, if the person has controlling, manipulative and selfish behavior. We talked about that previously. The pastor said one of the biggest problems in communication is selfishness. Instead of looking at the person to look at them and see what it is that you can add value to or add to, there's a manipulation. Everything is about me, 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 me. They want to control the narrative of everything. This is a red flag. It's only going to get worse. Number eight, and we talked about this previously. If they can make life altering decisions before consulting you, they don't even talk to you about it. I'm finna move to so-and-so, you coming too, pack up the bags. What? No, this is a red flag. People who can make decisions about if you're a ministry and there's a building that's coming up, um, we, 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 we wanna purchase a new location. They go out, they sign paperwork and just come back and tell you this building is, is um, we're under contract. That is not, got, that's red flag. That's a huge red flag. Number nine, emotional abuse. Now, a lot of people talk about abuse, but they, you know, we physical abuse is horrible, okay? But right now I'm talking about emotional abuse. I know tons of women, men too, I'm not a man, so I can't speak, but tons of women that deal with emotional ab abuse. Um, what this, this is a key to emotional abuse, refusing to communicate, refusing to see the significance in communicating through an issue, resolving the issue. It's always you doing too much. It's always, it don't take all that. It's always, I don't feel like talking about that. This is a red flag. If they talk poorly about you and you discover it, they talk poorly about you to someone else or to you. This is a red flag. This is not your spouse. This is not the person. This is a red flag. And if you're already married, this is something that needs to be addressed. This is something that needs to be addressed. If they're trying to sabotage, that's, that's something that needs to be addressed. If they talk coldly, coldly to you, like not being receptive or open, if they act superior to you in any area, this is something that needs to be addressed because you two are one, you're equal. You're, he's the head, but you two are one. It's very important that you understand that nobody's superior here. We're, we're one in God. And let's not, the last one, and we, we had something that hit our kingdom hard this week, physical abuse. When you are being literally hit on, 
you're trying to hide it with every piece of Mac makeup and everything else. You don't want nobody to know that somebody has put their hands on you. That is not God. That is the biggest red flag you can get in your life. That this person is not your spouse. Uh, this person is not for you. And I'm telling you, you cannot be silent on these things. You cannot for the betterment of, sometimes, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to be quiet and let somebody else talk. Sometimes in life, you can be so passionate about preserving the image of someone else that you lose your very life. And we've seen that happen. You don't want to tell nobody that this person is hitting you. You don't want to call the cops because of many different scenarios. And you can end up losing your life. And if it's not a physical death, I've seen it over and over again. A spiritual death is taking place because you are allowing yourself to be imprisoned in something that God did not put for the sake of saying you're married. For the sake of saying you're engaged, for the sake of saying that I don't want people to talk about us, I don't want, let me tell you something, the call of God and the life that he has gifted you with is more important than you staying locked in a situation that he never placed you in in the first place. It's imperative, guys. We cannot be silent and ignore red flags. When you see something, say something. I'm off my soapbox. Amen. We have a question, Dr. and Melissa Tai. The question is, how do you handle a marital situation where one spouse doesn't agree that the, the other spouse has been called into ministry? So I'm assuming that the question is, they are already married. None of them are in ministry now, but in the process, maybe one has been called. And that's how I'm beginning to understand understand the question. So how do you handle a marital situation where one spouse doesn't agree the spouse should answer the call of God while in marriage? Pastor? <laughs> well, first of all, when you enter into a marriage relationship, uh, we say for good, for whatever, all that, that stuff we say. And, uh, for and, better uh, for worse, doctor, for better for worse. <laughs> well, you know, uh, our, our lifestyle, hopefully uh, everything changes in life and we need to be able to adapt to it. And again, if you're communicating, uh, that's not going to happen overnight. You, Those things, are there are always signs showing that you have a call on your life and people can recognize it, especially if you're a husband and wife, you can recognize that. Uh, you know, and, and it doesn't matter uh, if the truth will be told. When, when one is called into ministry, uh, uh, we realize that it's going to be a, a much uh, finer scrutiny on not just the one who's being called, but also you. But hey, that's we in hits together, and we need to recognize that. And again, you go back to if that's what God wants, then who am I to fight against that? Again, you got to look at that. It's not what I want, but what, what God wants. And if God calls uh, your wife into ministry, then you also call too. And, uh, you know, she may be in front uh, in front of the people, but you also uh, are backing her and supporting her and vice versa. So, you know, selfish. We don't want to give up our lifestyle. We don't want the scrutiny and that kind of stuff. But wait a minute. Who do you belong to? Yes. What is our purpose here? If not to fulfill what God has purposed in us to do. And, you know, if, if I'm here for myself, then we're in a almost miserable situation. You are you truly have missed your purpose in life. Yes. Again, that's what I would say there. Uh, now, uh, always bottom line, you got to trust God. Mm -hmm. You have to trust God there. So, I don't know if that answered your question, but that's my answer. Yes, it did. yes, it did. so could it be a question of unequally yoked? You're Christians, but uh, yeah, okay, listen, listen to me there. Uh, uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, God said there's nothing too hard to do, and God said I never make a mistake. Now you may think He made a mistake, but He said I didn't. And always, always, when I say escalate, it's in your hand, God. I can't do nothing about this. I can't change no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. And I don't care if you're in a marriage relationship or what. I don't care who you are. You will hit. You will have situation where you can't do anything about it. Uh, I tell this story 
Uh, I know God had called me for foreign mission. You know what my wife told me? She said, God did not call me to no outhouse. <laughs> what am I going to say? All I could do was say, that's your daughter. That's my wife. If anything's going to change, you're going to have to change it. And put it in his hand. He's sure God is capable. And the question is, are you, are you humble enough to do that? And do you have enough confidence and faith in God in changing? And if he doesn't change it, then it don't need to be changed. Guess what happened? She came to me and said, okay, I'll go for a year. Now, you know, I'm thinking this girl can't go for two weeks. Now she's going to go for a year. And she did do that and was sold on it. Okay. But if I would have shaken it in my hand, you my wife and you got to go where I want. Come on. Come on. No, I'm giving it to God. You need to know. Uh, there's something God has uh, enabled you to handle, but you need to know the difference when stuff is not your, that's God responsibility. And you need to be, and you need to say, I'm giving it to God and be willing, whatever he does with it, be willing to accept it. Now, and let me just say this, let me just say this. Uh, people say, well, it's not easy. Let me tell you what my daddy told me. Son, Keep trying. Do I, need to, do I need to expound on keep trying? I don't think I need to. Another question came in. Two Christians and one doesn't want to be a pastor's wife. I mean, yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll leave it to you. But some people don't want to be pastor's wives or husband, vice versa. But nobody wants to. No, I shouldn't say nobody. Very few people want to be a pastor's wife. The truth will be none. I mean, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of people don't want to be a pastor. They may want some of the benefit of what they perceive as benefit of a pastor. I mean, you know, and again, the reason is because you're in the forefront. Mm -hmm. You're the target. Yeah. And and the exposure and the light is on you. So you got to trust God. Yeah. That's uncomfortable unless you have gotten to a point where you, you I live, I breathe by trusting God. And, and you're going to have to adapt that. And I'll say this, too, because that was my personal sentiment. Me, too. Before I was even engaged, I had made a decision. I'm not being a pastor's wife. And the reason why I made that decision was because of what I had witnessed pastor's wives endure. And because I was under the, um, under the umbrella with Dr. Dylan, and I was there, I saw the things that you know, the, the struggle of uh, trying to lead people who don't want to be led by, you know, sometimes they don't want to be led by a woman or seeing the women that would try and talk to your husband, you know, just all kinds of things I was seeing. I was like, oh, no, I don't want that. But when I was now uh, proposed to by a man of God, and I believe that that was the will of God for my life, my perspective changed. And I now knew that it was an honor and a privilege to be entrusted with this responsibility. And even though I was like, oh, this, I was afraid of it. It's even like Moses. When Moses was like, no, you can't send me. I'm, I, I can't go. You know, I stutter. But God still sent Moses yeah. back to Pharaoh. You see, and God created help. He had Aaron and he had everything that he needed to be successful to complete the task. And I would say to a woman that does not want to be a pastor's wife, the character, the essence, everything that God has in you is there to minister to that congregation in a capacity that you have no clue of. God is looking for people like you. You who don't want to be the pastor. You who don't want to be the pastor's wife. You who do not want to be the worship leader. God can use you because he knows that you know you cannot do it without him. And, and God always, he always, I don't know, it's something about God and the underdog. He loves it. <laughs> he loves that yeah. because there's no pride in that you know there are some people that's their goal they're like I'm going to be a pastor I don't care whether God called me or not <laughs> I'm being a pastor <laughs> mm -hmm. but then there's the call of God and sometimes we're pulled into ministry even like pastor said the call of God came on the wife 
and the wife now goes forward in the ministry. There is still, because the two are one, there's now a pull of God on that man. Not necessarily that that man is going to preach the word, but ministry means to serve. So there is service, whether your service is preaching the word, whether your service is um, doing logistics, whether your service is event coordination, whatever the service is. But now that your spouse has been called into ministry, you too are now, it's by default, you are going to be called into ministry. And I'm pretty sure God knew what he was doing. I'm pretty sure that God knew that there was something on the inside of you that would contribute to the ministry moving forward. Wow. Thank you so much. Doctor, I have one question, my personal question. Now, if you're already married, you're in ministry, and there is physical abuse, hmm. what do you do? Because that's what we encountered this week. This week. Um, I, I don't think doctor knows, right? A lady was literally shot by her husband. The husband is a pastor of a church in Miami, Orlando, Florida. Florida. Orlando, Florida. And I believe that this is, there's a lot more women that go through this, but don't speak up. Now, I, I believe most women keep quiet or delay the coming out of the marriage because of the stigmatization that happens. A woman who is in ministry, she's married to a pastor's wife, and you're coming out, you're going to be divorced. So that stigma and the fear of being called, whether which witch, whatever it is, causes these women to stay in the marriage that is already dead so well, what, what do we but, do but even but even with that before he answers abina not just so much about what's going to happen with her many of the women stay in the marriage because they are still concerned and they still love that man but they're they're concerned about what the people will say about him they're concerned yeah. about um whether or not the church will fall apart if they leave so they don't want to cause that type of rift and they stay and sacrifice themselves yeah. literally yeah. they sacrifice themselves so sacrifice yes yeah so pastor okay <laughs> well when you were when you were talking uh, I, I thought about uh you know when you were coming up whether between sisters and brother whoever if somebody hit you what did you do or uh, if somebody was trying to hit you you say you hit me i'm going to go tell my mama now, there ought to be someone that you can talk, whether whether it's your, uh, you, you know, your authority or, or uh, his pastor or whoever, but there ought to be somebody. And he needs to know that. He needs to know that. Uh, let me just share this from a personal standpoint. Uh, uh, um, my present wife, okay? Now, you know, just because somebody, your wife or your husband, you, you know, we get on each other's nerves. But when, whenever I raise my voice or look like I'm going to be uh, violent or anything, she said, I'm going to call my brother. <laughs> now, listen to me. Her brother believed that I'm a true man of God. And he'll call me and say, Warren, my sister said this. Now, I got to straighten this out. Well, you know, that's not the way it happened. But here's my point, accountability. And when a person know. If I do something, I'm going. To, it's going to be exposed. Now you can do it in a loving way, but if you hide stuff and it's done in the dark, then you know people uh, immediately think that well, nobody's going to know. I'll do what I. I'll do whatever I want to do. Especially if you're a man or woman of God, you need to say, wait a minute, you know. And even if I got to go tell your pastor. Now the problem is that so many there's a lot of ministers who don't have a covering, don't have a pastor, pastor or something like that. But, you know, even if you got to go tell your daddy or, or so whoever, whoever you, you know, you look at uh, as another authority and it works, it works. So that's what I would say that now you, you know, I don't believe nobody in just saying an abusive relationship. Now, uh, let me just say this in, uh, again. And it's a kind of a responsibility for both people, because everybody know when you, if you push one more time, what's going to happen? Or if, if just another feather fall on this situation is going to explode, you ought to, at least if you're a woman or man of God, you ought to know. And you can walk away from a situation or you can defuse a situation. Again, again, you know, we get a lot of time we get caught up in what I'm going to do and nobody's going to stop me type deal. So you, you got to use wisdom in both cases. Now, again, uh, I would say, you know, somebody put their hand on you or something, you know, you need to say, if you, you put my hand on, I'm going to tell this one or that one. 
at least, you know, they may be uh, big and bold enough to continue doing that, but then you don't have to stay in that relationship. I don't believe that at all. And then you might want to say, did I push it too far? Because I need to use wisdom in, in, in what I'm doing. So I think that's a responsibility on both parts. It should never get to that point. Somebody ought to be able to walk away from it. And if it's a continuing thing, no, 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 don't, don't. Mm -mm. I don't know. And I, I, I want to, I, I want to add to that too, because this is key because this incident shook me this week. It really, really shook the community this week. This person is a pastor. Mm -hmm. This young lady had already started the process or was, I had already divorced this person. Mm -hmm. But she was trying to gather her things from the house and she was still trying to be amicable. And he jumped on her and her brother, in turn, jumped on him. Mm -hmm. This person now told the brother point blank, like I'm talking to you, told him on Sunday, this previous Sunday, if because the brother said you a fake man of God. Mm -hmm. And he told the brother and it's on videotape. He told the brother, he said, if if I don't kill your sister. I'm a fake. Mm -hmm. This Tuesday, this man tracked this lady to the front of her job, Navy Federal, shot her seven times, point blank range. And my thing is, oh. we didn't say it all, we didn't done all, but if somebody tells you, and I, I need people to hear this, if someone tells you that they're going to kill you, don't leave that for interpretation. Mm-hmm. At that point, this is done. There's no more talking. We're out of here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, uh, and I guess oh, uh, I'm saying uh, you we just have to be sensitive and watch those signs and knowing how far to push and, and when to back away or even when to say, and I don't know the whole situation now, but even say, well, no, let me get the, the 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 police to go in and get my stuff, or let me go to a judge and get an order to do that. Again, which was again, what the brother told her to do, but she was a she did not want to escalate. Was her exact words? She did not want to escalate the situation to where the man would be, because in this case, the man was apply. He'd apply for his citizenship. She didn't want anything to happen where he would now be on record in ICE or anything like that. She wanted things to be fine for him, even though he had been hurting her. She still was looking out for his well-being, and he took her life. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I understand that. And, you know, the, the, I always ask the question, am I helping or hurting? That's right. And, um, you know, even though I may want these things to happen, and I want to mess it up. But am I helping or am I hurting? And, and I don't I want to hurt. Too, Pastor, the key to it all, which is what God has put on Abina's heart, is to be very cognizant of the red flag. Yeah. Yeah. We cannot ignore behaviors. We cannot ignore patterns. We cannot ignore the silencing of our voices anymore. We can not ignore even the silence itself. The silence is even loud. At this point, we need to address what's on the table and we need to act according, not just having a, a knowledge of it, but we need to move accordingly. Let, let, me, let me say this because the way we started, um, looking in one's eyes, I think you can see you can see so deeply in a person just looking in their eyes, even anger. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Have we lost you, doctor? No, I'm here. Can you, you can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear. I think your screen is frozen, but that's okay. I have one more question on the platform. The question is, how do you know you're being called by God? Do you have to attend Bible college to know that God is calling you or when people start calling you man of God because of your good deeds? So how do you know you're called and you're called by God? Well, I think it, that it's a very simple uh, answer as far as I'm concerned. Um, if, if First of all, if, if I sense that God is calling me, then just like I would do in real life, if I, so, if I think somebody called me and I, and I said, did you call me? Why can't we ask God, are you calling me? 
Uh, simple as that. Now, then I, I ask the other question. And I just say, well, I'm going to believe you calling me and I'm going to accept the call. And yes. He said that you'll, you'll not turn nobody away. So if, if I say, well, I believe God is calling me. Then the next question, would the devil imp uh, prompt my spirit to say God calling me to uh, be a, a woman or man of God? I don't think the devil will do that. You know, uh, he may try to, uh, once you accept that call, he may try to get you to do and think uh, uh, differently. So the, to me, uh, that's and now. Now, once the, the calling is, is easy, the question is after the calling, are you re ready to to discipline yourself and walk uh, uh, according to the Bible, say, uh, walk worthy of your calling? That's the, that's the key there. And then that's where the trial and tribulation come. But the calling, yes, I accept the calling, Lord. I believe you're calling me. So in whatever, be, sorry, go ahead. Well, in whatever area you, you may think it may be, has God got a call on my life? And, and, I, and then another thing. God don't just, uh, you know, one day wake up and call you. I mean, if you look, I, I tell people, look back at the signposts. You can tell from when you first, uh, one year old, two year old, God start doing this stuff. He don't, he don't just jump up and do stuff. He let, he, he, he set precedent over and over and over and over. And if you just take the time and go, look back, you'll see it. We run from those things or we try to ignore them. But if you go back and you'll see them. So must you now, have now you, now you, yeah, you mentioned about the Bible college and all of that. You know, you you need to prepare yourself. Uh, and I tell people, you know, just just trying to do the uh, 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 represent uh, Father God is going to be difficult because you have an enemy and he's going to try to stop you in every area. And if you try to prepare yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. At least you're not giving the devil any place. You know, not he's going to try to get places anyway. But you know, when you prepare yourself, at least you you know, and you know, just like anything. If I want to be a doctor, I don't just jump up and say I'm a doctor. I go and I be trained to be a doctor or a lawyer. It's no different from the from a ministry. Now, you know, you you need to make sure that uh, <laughs> you hear all kind of uh, uh, comments and 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 doctor and doctrines, dogma. But again, you got to make sure that uh, the Bible say, you know, uh, uh, you got to look at stuff uh, to see, test like the marine people. Go and check to see, if, is that what God said? And you teach it the Holy Spirit. Spend time. Let, let the Holy Spirit impart to you what, what you're saying. It's, and, you know, this should be a lifestyle, you know, Thanks. learning and listening to the Holy Spirit. Thank and you. Let me just say this in, in part. Uh, and and trust me, I'm I'm still struggling and and learning. But uh, when I say you got to totally depend on God, you know, He said, when you are brought before a congregation, or public, or audience, or whatever, don't worry about what you're gonna say. When you open your mouth, I'll speak for you. Now, if if, if I've been watching football game. Every day, all night. <laughs> it's going to be difficult for you to hear what God is saying. But if I spend time with him, you yeah. know, it, it just comes out. And now now the struggle is going to be, is that you, God, speaking? But if I know God's voice, because, I mean, then, you know, you said, and you feel free saying it. I guarantee you the things I've said today, if you'd have asked me what I would say, I probably wouldn't know. And if you ask me uh, tomorrow, I, you know, it would probably come out differently. I am, you know, if I make it myself clear. <laughs> yes, you I, have a, I have another question for you from the platform. What do you do in a Christian marriage if one spouse suddenly develops a new lifestyle of ungodly friends and causes distrust in other spouse and desires freedom to be friends with whoever? So I guess one party turns over um, to the other side. What do you do in your well, 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 let me say this. Uh, it's kind of when you truly sold out to God, you know, it's going to be difficult to go back. The song saying, I, I, I won't go back. Yeah. Now, that's, that's a, a process. People start uh, drifting. And, and if nobody's calling their attention to how they're drifting, when they wake up, they're, they're very far from where they started from. 
mm. but they can get back. And if they have a desire to get back. And let me let me just say this. A lot of times uh, people feel guilty and they feel bad because you miss it. Let me let me tell you this. I, I hope the person hear me. When I drift, oh my God, this is trying to go back. When I drift, the first thing I know is that I may be surprised, but God is not surprised. He knew. I don't know what's going on with my, my thing here because it want to lose. It's not charging, but that's okay. I'm assuming we're almost through here. Yeah. But but my my my, my answer to my question is that God not surprised where you are, but you got to trust him to get you back where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we feel guilty and ashamed and, you know, wait a minute, God knew this. And if he knew that and he called me, he knew before he called me what I was going to be. Or where where I was going to drift off to, but I got to trust him to be able to get me back where I need to be. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm facing to lose all kind of connection here. I don't know what's going on. The choice is not working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Miss Ty. I think we can wrap up though. Um, we'll say a prayer and then we will be able. Let me see if he's okay now. Maybe you got too much. Is it... Okay. Is there a last words that you have? I think that I think my my analogy so far is that um, I'm more concerned about the women um, valuing themselves. Um, prepping themselves, building themselves up, investing in themselves, and believing the God in their life to really make them who they ought to be and not settle for less. Because, I don't know, maybe society causes us to settle for less. When are you getting married from the church? When are you going to have a baby from the church? Or your parents are giving you this this pressure. When are you getting married? So so so-and-so's daughter or son is getting married. And because of those things, you, you, you turn to rush into any, you know, any Joseph and only Tom, Dick and Harry that walks through the door and proposes, you're saying yes to it because you need to get it over and done with before your parents chew your head off. And so those kind of pressures should not, I'll I'll really just emphasize that we should not go with that. We should instead go on our knees and pray to God, Father, I truly desire to have a spouse, a godly man in my life. And I want you to pick that person for me. Open my eyes to see the things that I ought to see, my ears to hear the things I ought to hear from you, and my heart to actually maybe love and understand the person that you're bringing to me instead of just rushing in and then we find ourselves in a place that we ought not to be. And then when you're trying to get out, which is called divorce, the same church, the same parents will tell you to stay in it because they think it's an embarrassment, they think it's a stigma. And so, you know what, go back in there, rather die somehow than come out and be a divorced woman. And so my whole thing about beautifying women is that, um, let me see if doctor's back up. Doctor, are you back up? I can hear you all, can you, all, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So okay. I'm just trying to wrap up here, but the main thing is that women should allow God to finish building them up. Allow God to give them the confidence that they need. Allow God to motivate them, mold them into the vessels that he, first and foremost, is seeking for. And then you can then go into marriage and support the spouse. But we, if you think that someone, we're not saying someone is not good enough for us. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying that God should pick us up with the right people. And we should be vigilant to know that this man that God is sending our way is the spouse that God himself has chosen. And whatever spouse we say yes to is not for our initial or personal benefit. It is always for the benefit of God and His and what needs to be done. He will pay you up to do certain works in his vineyard. And so women, we just want to say, sit back, don't you know, succumb to peer pressure either from parents or from the church especially. But go before God and say, Lord, this is what I desire. I desire to be married and help me and let me be found. Let me be discovered. As your word says that he who finds a wife, he finds a good thing so that I don't settle for something that 
I ought not to because of pressure. So um, I don't know about your situation, but my situation was that God was showing me things vividly in the dream. So pay attention, not just to the physical red flags, but the spiritual red flags that the Lord will show you. It might be a confirmation from somebody else, a pastor or your, your man of God or your covering or your own dreams and visions. You need to pay attention to those things to find out if the person you're about to pair up with is God with. And so that's all I have to say. Just be vigilant. Let, let, let me jump in here before you, you, you end up. Yes. Um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, peer, peer pressure or trying to please uh, uh, whether church parents or whoever, uh, the, uh, Paul in, in the book of Acts uh, prayed and said that one of the things that caused him to be successful was God had delivered him from the people. And so I just pray that's around the 26th uh, chapter of somewhere. In, but anyway, your prayer needs to be, Lord, deliver me from the, the people because you're trying to please people versus pleasing God. Mm. Okay. And then the, the second uh, the second thing is that because everybody, you know, because that's a kind of part of our culture to be married and da 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 and how all of that. And I mentioned this earlier, Proverbs 10, 24, the fear of the wicked is uh will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And again, I say change just change the way you 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 voice things. Instead of voicing the fear of what might happen, turn it around and, and express your desire. Because you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And he said that if you have a desire, he will grant those desires. And just stand on that. Stand on those promises of Almighty God. Uh, that, that's what I will say there. Uh, and then again, then again, the prayer should be, that's my desire. But if you have something better or different, have your will. Have your way. Mm. And, and be when you say that, be willing to whatever happened to say, okay, I submit. That's what God wanted. Fine. It's fine with me. That's not the end of things, even though it may not go the way you want it. But God, he's in control is what I'm trying to say there. Amen. There's another question for you, Pastor. <laughs> um, this man of God, well, I'm also calling him man of God, but he's saying that um, he's the same person who asks, how do you know you're being called by God? Um, if you if, Do you have to attend Bible school? He's still saying that um, he is a medical practitioner and obtained a certificate as a Christian minister. However, um, he loves his practice. He loves his, his job. But everyone almost refers to him as a man of God. And so that's where he's getting the intuition or um, um, idea that he could be called into ministry. So... Um, is there anything else you can say to that? Yeah, let me let, let me say this. Uh, we have a a, a very diverse God, <laughs> and we our concept of ministry is someone standing behind a pulpit. If you call in the medical field, you can minister there and pro proclaim the gospel, or just through your lifestyle. You don't have to be. And again, don't get in those bondage. Don't get into those bondage. You, if you a minister, or a man of God, you got to have a church. You have members and you got to be, no, 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 no. I mean, God has called us in different areas in a different way, okay? Uh, yes, there are people that will never go to church and God wants you to meet them in the medical field or wherever you are. So just yeah, let let your light shine is what he says. I don't care where you are, let it shine. And don't get, again, deliver from the people because we, we do things and, and get ourselves in so many uh, a miserable situation because we are trying to do it like people do it. Don't do it like people do it. Do it like God would do it. Yes. Amen. 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 Wow. I, I don't know what to say, but Dr. Dylan, this has been great with your phenomenal wisdom, grace, and knowledge that you shared with us. Um, we will find out and have you back. Uh, me, maybe just a counseling session or something for all of us who are seeking to get married and all of us who are seeking to be in ministry and all of us who are seeking, hopefully not to be divorced, but you know, just just some help for, for, for us. I, I cannot thank you enough, but we will talk offline, but thank let, you. Yeah, let me let, let me just say this in, in, in before we end. And if someone is uh, uh, entering into marriage or, or engagement or whatever, you need to have some uh, uh, Christian counseling. 
Uh, and I don't mean, you know, and, and me reading that. I mean, everything that you can possibly conceive or might happen in a marriage needs to be discussed before. Uh, there's a book that say, uh, uh, what do I say before I say I do? Or before I say I do. So you need to, you know, we practice everything else in life, but yet we don't practice our marriage. Let's see. Uh, and I, I, it's, it's not funny, but it's, it's very serious. You know, I, I was counseling a, counsel, uh, a, a, a couple and we came up with, uh, once you get married, uh, what's your plan uh, as far as your life? She said, well, I'm, I'm going to quit my job. I want you to know that engagement was broken that night. <laughs> <laughs> But again, those things that you need to know. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. No, no. <laughs> Please go ahead. Dr. Um, Ms. Ty, do you have anything else to say before we wrap up? No, I'm, I'm grateful. Again, uh, we thank you so much, Dr. Dylan, for coming. My only, um, just want to point again, women fall in love over and over again with God. When you love him passionately with all that you are, you will begin to know his voice. We know the voice of the one we love. And that voice will, will indicate to you these red flags, these things. Don't silence that voice. So my thing for you to know who you are as an individual, to know who you are in marriage, to know who you are if you're called to ministry or in your profession is to continuously fall in love deeper and deeper in love with God and be passionate and and um, be deliberate about your relationship with him. Wow, that's great. The more you stay under his feet, the more he beautifies you. Yes. The more you stay under his feet, the more his glory begins to overshadow and overpower you. And when they see you, they will see that glory. They don't even see you, Miss Ty. They see the glory. They see of the glory of God. Exactly. Um, who is it? Sanaj. She uh -huh. said it perfectly. Okay. You make my life so beautiful. Yes. And so, women, please don't settle for less. <laughs> please don't. Just settle with God and let God take the wheel and take over. Dr. Dylan, I have, I, I'm so speechless. I, I know I'm going to have you back. I don't know how, but we're going to make it happen. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. Because the vast of wisdom and knowledge, even if it's just a men's program, so they know how to treat the, the flowers they pluck, also they know how to treat the women that they intend to spend the rest of their lives, so they get it right. Yeah. I think... But it's any time, let me know. And you know what you just said before we go? You said the flowers they pluck. Yes. The problem is they shouldn't pluck the flower. They should water it. Mm -hmm. And let it grow. Well, I mean, what if they want it in their garden? Because they apply, I think I said that because it's a proverb. In no, God. I know. It's a proverb. They told me <laughs> about it. But right when you said that, the Holy Spirit said that's the problem. They should water it. They're they plucking water. the flower instead of the flower is rooted in me. I just, they're supposed to water it. Water it and water it and water it. And God it. is the one that brings the increase. Increase. So... <laughs> We need we need some training for our men. I think uh, as much as we women, we need a training. I think there's a lot of we have a ton of training. <laughs> <laughs> the women. We, need, we need some in depth training for the men not to feel like if they're vulnerable, that means they are less of a man, or if they show so much affection for their wives, they are less of a man, or they are still not. The, I don't know what the the psyche is. I really cannot get into a man's head, but. They need to be comfortable. Yes. They need to be um, rest assured in their own skin and the God that they serve. That taking a woman out of her home and bringing her into your home and loving her selflessly is actually for the good. Mm -hmm. And so, Dr. Dylan, I we, I need to figure out how to rattle, you know, rally some men around you and come back again and have a platform for the men as well because the men are also suffering and yes. probably don't know how to voice out their emotions because yeah. they put everything in. And once it comes out, the healing and the restoration, they will be now be able to take a woman and treat her right. Just okay. treat her right. So, yeah. that's, that's fine with me. If, if you have a, there's a need, then fine. But one of the things about men is they're going to have to agree to submit to be able to hear uh, what is being said. 
you know. So, you know, you can't push a man to do stuff. He's going to have to agree to, to do that. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, fine. If they're ready, God will get their heart ready. Uh, I'm available, and I know there's other, I'm not the only one, there's other great men, uh, uh, men of God that, that really have far more experience and not wisdom and knowledge than I do. But whatever, you know, whatever way I can, whatever I can say or, or share, that's fine with me. Uh, you know, it's after all, it's to give God the glory. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, and I'm trying to be quiet, one of the things that we fail to recognize is that we are his representative here on this earth. And we are supposed to be an example in every area, not just in the church, but in every area of our life. Especially in the church, but in every area. And when the world look at us and don't see Christ, they have a distortion of what Christ is. Yeah. So. Thank you so much, Miss Ty. You're just a great friend, Thank you. a great woman of God. I appreciate you, and I love you so much. And, love you too, uh, Dr. Dylan. I am so honored to have known you and hear about you. So please, the outreach Ghana is next on the plot on the on the map. <laughs> uh, so Miss Ty, I'll ask that if you could please wrap up with a prayer for us and then yeah. call it a day. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we give you honor and glory. We thank you for yet another opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace. We thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom that has been shed abroad in our hearts today. We thank you, Lord, for your precious love, your spirit, and just the wisdom that you give us through each other, through your word. We thank you for this program today. We thank you for Dr. Dylan and the wisdom that he shed um, to us today. We thank you for your daughter, Abina, and her willingness and openness and a heart to, to beautify women. Father, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus, if there's any woman that's going through a process right now where she feels degraded, where she feels belittled, where she feels as if she's not enough, I ask in the name of Jesus that you touch, that you rekindle, that Lord God, you let her see herself through your eyes, that you help us, oh God, not to ignore the red flags and that you lead us forward into your purposes and plans for our life. We thank you for our men, oh God. We thank you that you're turning the hearts, oh God, of, of all that you've called unto you. And we give you the glory for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this is not our end. It's a new beginning. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. This was great. Back again. Thank you, Dr. Dylan. Thank God bless you all. God bless you too. Thank God you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Hmm.